Hey, everybody. Thank you for having me. Um, let's get this thing working. Cool. Beverly. So, like Camille said, I'm the founder of Beverly. Uh, Beverly is a simple tool that helps you get the most out of your beverage program. We combine the most important information and translate into real, actionable insights that you can use every day to experience better sales and provide better hospitality and allows you to focus on what you do best. So Tech Table is all about bridging the gap between hospitality and technology, and that's exactly how we think about these things at Beverly. Cool. So here's how we see the opportunity. Um, it can be a really challenging business. A few percentage points is the difference between success and failure, as you all know. And that means that each part of your business needs to run at maximum efficiency all the time. So we kind of broke this down a little bit. And we think about the restaurant operation as two distinct businesses living under one roof, food and beverage. The beverage part of your business is a lot more like a package business. You curate from an infinite selection for your guests. And we know that you're making significant investments into your beverage program, so we want to help you get the most out of it all the time. And the way we do that is to properly analyze what you're doing inside your restaurant and then combine it with important information from outside your restaurant, things like selection, pricing, and consumer trends. So the real aha moment came when we realized that uh, when we looked at it that way, we could unlock a lot of new value. So, what is Beverly? Beverly is a cloud-based beverage platform that is powered by lots of data to provide you with the best actionable insights. And those insights are what makes Beverly so powerful. We know that getting data isn't the big opportunity here, and you've heard a lot about data today. Context that will make your lives easier and help you succeed is really what you're about. So that's the smart part. That's why we call data and context smart. Data without context is useless. Data with context is smart and invaluable to you and your operation. This is what your typical data looks like now. Um, it's just a, a typical spreadsheet, raw numbers, no context. Everything is treated the same. It's going to be really difficult and painful to turn this into anything meaningful for you and your operation. Here's what Beverly does. We map everything out on an individual basis and take into account various categories like house favorites and rare items. We help you program these various categories so that everything you're buying and selling is working for you all the time. We identify those items that are selling really well so you can buy more or optimize the prices, and we show you what's holding you back. But it's still a graph, and graphs are cool, and it's better than the last slide, but here's what it looks like in real time. Very simple, very clean. All the headline items are right in front of you. Each item is color-coded, right? Green is good, yellow, keep watching those. Red, stop doing that, make changes. Our proprietary technology accounts for all of these various categories of beverages and wines. So if something is rare or difficult to replace, we know that and we adjust accordingly in real time. Beverly is not a robot. It is not a replacement for your passionate and talented beverage professionals, managers, and sommeliers. Our goal always is to build something that you'll use every day to achieve success. And we know that the only way to make Beverly as powerful as possible for your operation is to build it from the ground up with your needs in mind. And that's why we've already partnered with some of the best minds in the hospitality business from day one. They're at the table working with us at every possible stage to make sure that it's working. In fact, we've already seen the benefit of that. So let me show you what that looks like in the real world. So here's what we did. We took four restaurants. We analyzed the wine inventory and quarterly, quarterly sales of these restaurants in the New York metro area, all with great and varied beverage programs, but all very different concepts, different sizes, and different neighborhoods. And here's the results. So, total wine sales for this period, $1.3 million. Very good. Unsold wine cost, however, was $600,000. That's real cash that didn't contribute during this time period. Unsold wine value exceeded $1.8 million. So that's a decent amount of wine that just wasn't driving the business during that quarter. 
Now, of course, some of, that, some of those are wines that you want to keep around and you want to sell her and you want to increase the marketing value of the list. But once you dig in, and we did, there's a lot of stuff that just isn't moving. And that's just this one quarter. There are wines out there that were purchased a long time ago. So Beverly will enable operators to identify cost savings and opportunities at a granular level and make adjustments in real time. But that's just the start. It's not just about cost savings. We also identify those items where you can optimize on price and make incremental changes to extract more value. And in this case, we found an extra $80,000 in these lists of just looking at the best selling items and price optimizing. That represents an increase of over 6% for these four restaurants. Now, if everyone were to close their eyes right now and think about $80,000 of what you could do with in the restaurant business and your operation, I think it would be fairly significant. So that's Beverly, uh, at least the first few bits. We're working on several exciting features that tie into all of this that we'll be able to share very soon. Um, and that's it. So thank you very much. I forget which side yeah, you're supposed I, to sit on. I think this I think okay, we're all set cool. up. It's a big issue, big issue back I think it depends on where, yeah, your mic is on this side and yeah, my mic yeah, is yeah. on this side. So, um, <laughs> great job. Thank you. Um, it's, uh, it's a lot of fun. You, you have the advantage of uh, pitching the probably the one VC that doesn't drink. So, um, nice. it's, uh, you, you'll have to ignore the remedial questions here. But one thing I noticed is um, a lot of the wine... And, and, and alcohol beverages at restaurants is recommendation based. Yeah. And I, I wonder about the feedback loop and the demand is, is where is the optimization happening? Is it, is it happening because you're stocking things that, that are being demanded by the customers or is it a function of saying, hey, by the way, of these things that should be recommended, like this one's higher margin, and yeah. because you, your own staff has a big influence on this, right? Absolutely. Um, so as an outsider, I'm actually come from the media world, uh, but in this process, we actually identify, I've interviewed hundreds of beverage managers, sommeliers, et cetera. And um, in painting a very broad stroke, it's, um, it's treated as an art. It's like, you know, what do we think our customers will like? What's hot in the marketplace? What does the current beverage manager or sommelier, what are they passionate about? Um, and then they buy that and then they sell it. And what happens is the typical way of looking at a beverage program is to just to keep the cogs as low as possible, mm -hmm. call it 25%. The problem with focusing on cogs is that it hides a lot of things that aren't working well, but it also hides a lot of things that are working, also working really well. So, you know, you hear a lot about data today and we're supremely data focused, but Beverly doesn't have a point of view on your restaurant concept or what you buy or how you're selecting it. What we want to do is we want to give you those actionable insights so you can basically turbocharge whatever concept you have in mind or mm -hmm. had in mind when you open the restaurant. Um, so. What, what this should do over time is if you think of the, the, your beverage program as this massive portfolio, we are constantly optimizing it. You're getting that feedback. I mean, the slide about the, the sunk cost of, of $600,000 is a massive number, but the cool part is, is if you're using Beverly in real time, you'll never get in that hole. Yeah. Because but that's get, not law. Yeah. I mean, that's stuff that you could still sell. Oh, no, sorry. I mean, that's I, not sorry. Common, I mean, right? You're absolutely right. It's, it's, it's not it's, like they would have sold down to zero. It's, it's, sorry, it's not a sunk cost, but what, what it is, sorry, it's a sunk cost, but in the, in the time period that we looked at, mm -hmm. it didn't contribute anything. So sure. you should take some of that and reallocate. Well, that's one of the questions I had is sort of where your benchmark was for your, your expectation of improvement. Like you, you suggested that there was 80K of, of price optimization, yeah. but without being able to test that, you know, there's, is that a comparison to like so what, restaurants exactly. or okay so we actually so i mentioned so you combine uh, restaurant data exactly so what we do so you know I, I talked about this um but it, i'm glad you asked me about it so half of what we analyze is internal economic activity the other half is what's available in the marketplace and what's trending um so 
for example, let's say you have an item that's selling really, really well. So you know, we have a proprietary power rating that is mm -hmm. similar to like that you would have in baseball. Um, and if it has a high power rating, we should say, okay, well, listen, buy more of that. If they offer a multi-case drop, buy that. It might cost you more in advance, but you're going to make that. You know, you're, you're going to get the benefit of that cost difference. Mm -hmm. Then what we also do is we say, well, who else is selling this? This is a standardized product. The same wines exist on many lists at the exact same time. We say, well, if you're selling really well um, and you can get more of it, and you're selling it at the 65th percentile, mm -hmm. that's a very, very strong signal that the risk of increasing the price incrementally is very, very low. So over time, what you will do is you will find what is not a fair price, but the right price for your concept at that time. And, and what's your estimate of... Uh, what the payback would be in terms of, you know, I, I have a program of mm -hmm. average size restaurant, you know, and an average size program. I start paying you and, and when do I break even? Because I yeah. have to pay you a lot for the software, right? Exactly. You have to pay me a lot for the software. That's very important <laughs> for all the investors in the room. Um, so to be clear, this is an ROI positive platform. The only way it works is that you're getting multiple dollars back from where uh, what, what we will charge. And on pricing, we think about it all the time. And we have some ideas around it. We're going to test some of those things. Mm -hmm. But when we modeled this out, um, the math works at any scale. So if you're doing $30 million a year, you're going to have massive returns by doing this. But this is it volume-based pricing? I, no, I don't, I don't think okay. we're going to do that. I don't think we're going to do that. I don't want, it's not I'm getting a little granular, but I don't know how sure. aligned that is with the restaurant. Okay. Um, I'd rather make it more transparent and fair. Um, but when we think about, well, how low can you go, right? And we've, we've looked at, we've modeled this out. If you're doing about a million and a half dollars a year top line, you're selling about $35,000 a month in wine. And if we can, you know, if we can increase that by a couple percentage points, that's hundreds of dollars per week. Mm -hmm. Now, for some industries, that's not super sexy. For restaurants, it's pretty sexy. Uh, so, and it gets better over time. So the floor is pretty low for some of the finer dining restaurants in our favorite urban cities in the, in the country, those numbers are massive. Those gotcha. numbers are absolutely massive. But and, it is absolutely about ROI. And, and how does this mesh from a process perspective with ordering platforms? Mm -hmm. Like I you know, would imagine that uh, the ordering side of this is probably at the moment in, in many restaurants pretty low tech. It's, yeah. But doesn't this, is this at some point a feature that goes in a more sophisticated ordering platform that somebody comes along and says, hey, not only can you order through us, but we've got some trend data and, and all that sort of stuff. Is that something that you might do at one so point? So what, what you're seeing today is basically what we're able to deliver today. If you go to our website, you sign up, we can be on site and you can get this data immediately. But to be clear, Beverly is a beverage platform. So everything that you need to do on site um, whether it's ordering, whether it's printing a wine list, uh, we'll, go through, we'll go through Beverly. And in fact, I think the way we see it is the nuts and, bolt, the nuts and bolts aspects, they're going to be great, but they're probably going to be mm -hmm. free. I think what the thing you're going to end up paying for is the special sauce around the data. And once you start aggregating those things and once you start seeing how deep you can get into some of this economic activity, then you start to paint a really interesting map and trend data. What's going on in Lower Manhattan? What are the trends? What, you know, I've, we talked to some restaurants that want to have the same as everyone else, but then price it a little less. Mm -hmm. We talked to some restaurants that want the exact opposite of what's down the street, so no one is comparing it. They, and they can charge prices. a lot more. Exactly. So gotcha. again, we don't have a point of view on that. This is, this is not a robot. This is, um, our goal is to you know, do, do this massive leap forward mm -hmm. on data insights. And the insights is the thing, because sure. at the end of the day... I just didn't uh, yeah. take, take oh, a time. Sorry. I want to make sure yeah, you yeah. get to all, all the questions. Um, from when you started this, what's been the thing that you thought was going to be a, a big feature home run or, or you know... A, a, hypothesis that you had mm -hmm. that it is now that you have it in the hands of potential customers was actually wrong because <sighs> not everything is going to go right obviously. no no i mean the, the list of wrong things is much longer than the list of <laughs> right things um so when we 
when I first started thinking about this, it was really more about the typical marketing and, and the democratization of wine and, and those kind of things. And those are all, you know, those are all great ideas. But once we really drill down into the restaurant economics and once we, you know, that aha moment was a real moment, we said, look, you guys just don't have the tools to look at it this way. Mm -hmm. um, but again, that was still a theory. I mean, it's, it, it, it's math. It makes sense. Other industries work that way, but we didn't know that we could apply it to this. And then we did, and thankfully, the results were way outside of what we thought they were going to be. Um, those initial meetings where we would present back just a spreadsheet of like, hey, look, you gave us some sales, you gave us some inventory data, here's what it looks like. These were all profitable and healthy programs. But then you drill down below the surface and you're like, wow, we have a million dollars worth of inventory that hasn't moved. Gotcha. And we paid, we paid for that two years ago. It's like, oh, wow, okay, let's, let's chip away at that somehow. And, and do you think yeah. that uh, there are channel marketing opportunities? Like you're the beverage platform at some point, and, and will you at all take a stand on, are you uh, purely in the business of helping restaurants make more money? Mm -hmm. And I'll never see any ad specials, all this sort of stuff, or will you help both sides and say, okay, well, you know, you could possibly enable some targeted advertising or, you know, channel placement to potential restaurants from the beverage uh, so, manufacturers? Yes. I mean, the, the data that we aim to aggregate and weaponize is a lot of that. And since it is a standardized good, it travels through this three-tier antiquated system, um, and there's a lot of people that are touching it. So when we talk to the restaurants, I basically say, just tell me what's working, what's not, what, you know, where are your where are your pain points, and then we try to figure out are there are there ways to unlock some of those things. But then when you talk to the vendor community, they have a lot of the same blind spots. Um, so we think that there's going to be a lot of value in just you know putting out things like what's selling through really fast in, in the East Village. Gotcha. Yeah. Cool. Uh, in the last few seconds, yeah, I'll, sure. I'll, given that there's probably a handful of investors in the audience besides <laughs> me, yeah. um, very quick ask. Mm -hmm. So you need how much money to take it to what next level? And what are those sort of near-term goals? So the near-term goal is to, you know, we're, we're kind of post-MVP um, and we're building every day. So uh, right now we're kind of in the middle of a friends and family round, typical convertible debt. Uh, we want to complete that and then show some real traction, get, some, get to some real you know, monthly recurring revenue so then I can come back to... So you wouldn't uh, take my money now if I offered it? I would absolutely take your money now. Because we weren't now. friends before. No, no, no. Exactly. Okay, I'm, I'm, just... I'm happy to take your money. Okay. Um, it, so yes, we're, we're always raising, but um, we want to do it very strategically. And, you know... I, so you take your money from better people than me, then? <laughs> anybody who has anybody who has a value to bring to the table is is who we're targeting. Gotcha. Yeah, exactly. And how much is that? A uh, million dollars. Gotcha. Yeah, million dollars. And what's in the, the goal term? with that? Where do you want it's, to get? It's basically to to get a real platform up and running in in restaurants, um, get people using it, getting the dashboard working, um, bringing in. Um, you know, we've actually built a lot of really interesting tools on the back end. We want to start integrating those things. Mm -hmm. Some of that benchmark data that we were talking about. Uh, so we have some proprietary technology that aggregates a lot of information and layers it on top of what's mm -hmm. going on in the restaurant. And then just keep, keep layering on top of that. Gotcha. Cool. Yeah. Thank you very much. Cool. Thanks, guys. Nice job.